So last time we talked about why 2.5 magnification has become default magnification in dentistry. Today we'll talk about the best magnification in dentistry in my opinion. Let's first review what things look like again in different magnifications. I showed this in the last video, but it's a good refresher. So finally, which magnification do I recommend? I actually recommend five times. And I know this may seem high, I know I'm an endodontist and I may be biased, but give me a chance to explain. I used five times loops I upgraded for all things general dentistry for one year in general practice residency a few years ago before endo. So I can speak from experience, even though I purchased 2.5 loops like everyone else in my class when I was a dental student. So as a general practice resident, I used five times for everything in my first year. I used it for scaling and root planing, restorations, crown preparations, endo, surgical extraction, and even implant placement. And here's what I've learned. There's no doubt you can see the finer details, which I don't think anyone will argue. You can just be more accurate and precise. The question was always whether or not it was worth adjusting to the small field of view and depth of field? My answer to that is an overwhelming yes. It's totally worth it. In general, you can remove everything you need better without removing too much of the things that you don't want to remove. You can just see better closer. In perio, there's no question we still have to go by feel as far as detecting and removing subgingival calculus. But in higher magnifications, you can certainly see exactly where your instruments are going stroke by stroke. You can check yourself and prevent moving along too far after the outstroke. It's similar to the reasons higher magnification is good for endo. In restorative, you can diagnose caries better. You can remove caries precisely without moving too much tooth structure. You don't have to rely on feel alone. Your internal and external outline forms can be more precise. And when you do feel the restorations with composite or amalgam, it can be smoother margins. In prosthodontics, such as crown preparations, at higher magnifications, your margins can be more perfect, your occlusal clearance could be adequate, and you don't have to worry about hitting the tooth interproximally when you're prepping. In endo itself, explanatory, you don't have to talk more about that. In surgical extractions, you can remove bone uh, more finely, you can be more careful around the roots. For instance, when you trough around the roots, you don't have to remove as much bone. In implants, in particular single unit implants, this is a little bit more controversial, but I actually find implant placement easier at higher magnification. Of course, with full arch, you're doing guided or anyway, so magnification doesn't matter. But in single unit implants, I find it actually easier to determine angulation freehand with adjacent teeth at higher magnification. In the end, five times magnification is my recommended magnification. I realize it's not gonna be for everyone. It's okay, all I'm hoping for is that people will look at magnifications other than 2.5. Just the fact that I see so many dental students these days lean closer to their patient just to have a closer view is reason enough to go at a higher magnification. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.